Lesson 2 setup. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the setup of um, the PyCom device and the software. Let's jump directly into it. This is what we're going to do today. And um, then connect the device and, and try uh, let it communicate with, uh, with your computer. Um, and well, uh, you see the USB cable here. Just a um, short mentioning of uh, the antennas. It's recommended that before you send anything on the LoRa or Sigfox, uh, you should have attached an antenna. I've, and um, if you're unsure of this, you can remove the RTS CTS jumper cables uh, as shown and then it should not transmit, but please just attach the antenna and it's no problem. Short about the expansion board. And uh, the expansion board is uh, uh, the way that we're going to um, connect our low pi device or five pi device to the computer. Uh, it has a micro SD card uh, reader and writer so you can log data you can write and read the data directly to the micro SD card from uh, from your board so the device can actually be used as a, a logger and not only a, uh, a wireless transmission device and then you can put your low pi obviously and then connect uh, or it exposes all your pins in a neat way uh, you can see the jumper cables pointed out where you have some functionality of the turning off or turning on the uh, battery charging, etc. The expansion board has a built-in uh, battery charger. Uh, so if you have a rechargeable battery, this can be used for charging up the battery. And um, not to forget the USB port, uh, which we are going to connect to both power the device and also communicate with the device. I must mention, be very gentle with the USB connector. I've broken uh, at least one uh, of these expansion boards USB connectors when well, I was a bit harsh perhaps. Um, and uh, then it becomes tricky uh, if you want to connect it to a USB <laughs> cable. So try to be gentle, don't, don't use any force. Uh, and my advice is that you don't disconnect and connect the micro USB port on, on the expansion board more than needed. Uh, if you want to disconnect and connect the device, do it on the other end and on your computer uh, with the uh, USB A end instead. So try to keep as little strain on that micro USB port as possible. Um, in that case, you, oh, well, <laughs> you might not have to order uh, yet another one just to finish your project. And um, you can find uh, all uh, the data sheets and specifications on the expansion board on PyCom's website uh, and um, as I said earlier this is more a way of exposing, of exposing the, the pinouts. Obviously you need to do a correct mounting of uh, the low pi device uh, on board uh, the expansion board. It can only go one way and all pins should be in in its respective uh, place. If you mount it the wrong way, and yeah, I have tried it, uh, it doesn't seem to break anything, but uh, it says in the manual and the documentation that it's not recommended, so I won't recommend it either. Put it the right way, uh, yes, directly, and it will make a lot of things easier. Uh, it might be that you need to update the firmware if you need to update the firmware, which I don't think because 
I, and now we're talking about the firmware of the expansion board. So the expansion board firmware. The low pi, we'll talk about that in just a little bit, but the expansion board also has a firmware. And it, they should be updated, but you need to read up on, on how to update the firmware. And if you're unsure if you have any problems, uh, this is a way that well, at least we can, can start to update the firmware so we know that. The documentation on how to update the firmware is found on the PyCom website. We'll talk about this on um, uh, more specifically during one of the live workshops uh, with, which are going to be held by our great teaching assistants. Be a little bit careful uh, when you do this so you don't mess things up um, because what you're doing now is flashing the bootloader, boot, bootloader of, of the expansion board. Um, so if you get a power short out, uh, well, something happens during just that exact moment. It might, might be tricky to get things working again. I just say, I'm saying might, I'm not sure. If you by any chance still are running Windows 7, well, you, you should not. So let's start with that. Try to upgrade your operating system uh, and um, to something more modern. Uh, maybe um, a Unix based system or uh, worst case Windows 10. But just mentioning that Windows 7, you need to find drivers for Windows 7. So if you're on Windows 7, you'll have to go and download drivers and make them work. If you're on Windows 10, if you're on Mac OS or on Linux, it should work right out of the box. Uh, so, but the older operating systems might need drivers. Updating the firmware. And, and now we're talking about the firmware of the low pi device, uh, the actual microcontroller. And uh, there are a lot of different versions of the firmware, um, but you can find the PyCom firmware updater on the PyCom website. It's a small program, you download it to your computer and uh, that's about it. It's very easy to get going and you connect your device with USB and well, here's the thing, if the ex expansion board firmware isn't updated, then this might have a problem working. So you'll probably just notice that right away if it's not updated, if you can't update the low pi firmware. If this seems to work, well, don't bother about updating the expansion board firmware. But you, this is something that you will be doing more than once because it might be that you're testing a different fir firmware. Uh, there is a legacy firmware of MicroPython and there is their uh, PyCom's own PyBytes firmware. We'll dive into that a little bit later on. But you need to download the firmware update tool. And then we're going to set up the PyMaker IDE. And IDE is short for Integrated Development environment that's where you write your code and well, do all that um, uh, that's where you develop your project more or less uh, and it can be used for writing code uh, and also in this case uh, for uh, communicating with your device um, which is one of the great advantages with the PyCon devices as I see it is that you have this interactive interface with Python directly. Uh, so it, it's very quick and very easy to test out ideas and to run something. There are two ideas. Both of these are free. Uh, it's just a matter of choice. Uh, there are, a, a, yeah, there are of course many more. I mean, some people use Vim, some people run Nano, some people um, use uh, Visual Studio or um, Xcode, whatever. So there's a lot of different uh, ideas. Uh, but in this uh, course, uh, you can either choose Atom or VS Code. And that's because this PyMaker plugin is only for, it's only compatible with 
uh, either Atom or uh, VS Code. So just choose either. Uh, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. Uh, they should be as updated both plugins for, for this. I personally prefer Atom. Ask someone else and they might say, I prefer VS Code. And VS Code is actually one thing that Microsoft has managed to do good. I'm just saying. So, <laughs> uh, well, if you look at uh, uh, Microsoft Teams application, maybe not one of the best things they've done, but well, VS Code, it's pretty good. But I prefer Atom. Uh, you just take a pick, try both, they're free and they're not very heavy on your computer either. When you have installed Atom or Visual Studio Code, you go in and install a package called PyMaker. Um, you, you, you find it under the, um, uh, I'll share the screen. And now we have my Atom editor open. I'll go up and check preferences. And then I'll jump to install. Now it's already installed, but I will see it anyway. You can see here that I have the PyMaker plugin to 2.1.5. And that's already installed, so it will look the same for you. When this is installed, you will get a new black uh, REPL interface uh, down below. So I'll just connect my PyCom device now. And you can see that something happened. I'll press the reset button and you can see that I can now execute code directly. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be two pluses. I can execute code directly on on the device uh, via the REPL interface. We'll go into how more in detail how this works in uh, just a little bit. And when you have installed this, it should be enough just connecting your device with USB and you'll get the REPL interface. Um, just it might be that if you're on Windows, you might need Node.js, uh, which is uh, JavaScript on your uh, computer. Um, the PyMaker plugin uses Node.js uh, for um, some, some parts of the communication. So if you're on a Linux or a Mac computer, uh, in my experience, this is not needed. Um, well, and, and if you're on a Windows com, uh, machine, you have to download it. That's about it for uh, this uh, session.